So that's um, why they asked me to tell you something uh, about it. Um, and don't blame me for my English uh, knowledge because sometimes uh, I uh, will have to try to find the right words, but we'll probably work it out together. Um, I don't know if you've seen a lot today on the clinics that we had, and if you have seen things on the, um, the training of a Frisian, or uh, you've seen maybe the horses this morning in the indoor arena doing uh, the story on the uh, EBOP. Um, so you know something about what I'm going to tell you already. Uh, if there's anything you need to know, or you have any questions uh, during uh, the uh, information from me, then just, uh, uh, well, ask me. It's good. I always like to have some interaction, so if you have anything that's not clear or you want to know something, then please let me know. I don't know if you're from uh, countries far away, and I don't know if the tests that we have here are uh, a bit similar in your country. Um, but if it's really diff different or you have other struggles, then, uh, well, just uh, let me know. Um, I'll try to keep my intro short because um, I was really slow uh, in the other, uh, in my Dutch story, but I'll probably be quicker here. Um, well, just to uh, give you some general information on the uh, three ways you have to train your horse and to uh, have something that you can use to get um, uh, yeah, the, um, the horse to be crown or uh, uh, star. Um, when, he, uh, when the mare has done, uh, the, uh, has, has become forlopig uh, crown, like uh, um, to be definitive, uh, definitive crown after that. You have to do or sport, uh, sport results or um, ABF pay uh, score or EBOB. Um, so it's, um, there are uh, reasons to choose any of them. Um, so I'll just try to see what the uh, do's and don'ts are. Um, uh, not everyone has... I think flicker to be right. Okay, well, don't blame that. Well, um, not everyone is capable uh, of riding their horse uh, at competitions and do everything themselves or have a rider and spend lots of money on uh, training a horse to get higher level and get the sport results you need. Uh, and for the stud book, it's not really relative information on uh, breeding because it's been judged by uh, another judge, not from the stud book, and you don't really have that much information on what the quality of the horse is. It's good that the horse has done the, uh, the level and the scores that they request, but not really information on uh, yeah, the quality of the horse or uh, bloodlines that you can use. Um, but it's, you can use it to get the mare to be crowned, um, as well as you can do in the ABF pay. Um, for the stud book, it's giving more information to, uh, uh, yeah, to, to use the scores from the ABFP. Does everybody know what it is? You know the, uh, what ABFP means? We don't know much about it. Anyone, anyone here? No. Okay. Uh, what we do, uh, the, we do the test. Uh, for um, uh, yeah, three and four year old uh, horses, you can bring them as a breeder uh, green and they are trained for seven weeks at one location. They stay there, they have a team of riders training the horses and they um, get four uh, moments of uh, uh, judging. So like two exams in the end in which the horse gets a score for the uh, the presentation under the saddle and the carriage drive. So <clears throat> what you, um, uh, if you get the 77 score or higher, uh, uh, you can use that to um, yeah, uh, get the mare crown or uh, it's, it, it's good on their uh, CV uh, for the horse. Uh, for the stud book, it's uh, good to have 
the, uh, yeah, the judges like me uh, that are uh, chosen by the stud book to get, give the scores and you can make, uh, at the end of the year, um, you can make a schedule of the results and see, uh, um, yeah, you get lots of information. Uh, see, for, uh, for example, uh, what the uh, average uh, score is uh, on uh, walk, for instance, uh, if, uh, if you see it in uh, like 10 years comparing if the walk is improving or not. Uh, you, you get lots of information by uh, training and, and uh, monitoring uh, uh, lots of horses and get more scores. Uh, gives you lot, lots of things, uh, yeah, if, if we are on the right way and uh, uh, what the quality of, of the uh, offspring is now, uh, as well as uh, the young stallions, once they're approved, um, they uh, have to uh, have 20, uh, uh, 20 offspring um, trained in the Abbey of Bay. The, um, that's, that's the rule to get information and to get them uh, to stay uh, approved. Um, so uh, you get owners that send horses to the Abbey of Bay um, just uh, uh, because they want the horse to be trained and to have, uh, have a score. And you have the, uh, the stallions that are um, uh, yeah, obligated to uh, send 20, uh, 20 offspring uh, to the test to uh, get the score and to, to use that for information on how they breed and uh, um, yeah, if they uh, are allowed to, to stay uh, to, to, to breed. Is that a good, uh, is, do you understand that? <clears throat> so um, in the RBF Bay, the horses are there for seven weeks. Um, they're trained by the uh, team of riders. You get a score in the end. Um, you don't have to do it yourself. You don't have to send it to a, uh, a rider to train the horse and um, ride the test. It's all arranged and it's like one package. And for the stud book, you get a lot of information. Um, and yeah, the more horses you see and the more offspring of one stallion you've had there, the, the better you can compare things. Um, the EBOP is, um, uh, you get the same exam, you get the same score as in the AVF Bay, uh, only the, uh, you have to ride it yourself or you have to ask a rider to train the horse and to uh, show the horse in the test uh, to get the score, yeah. Uh, which is an option as well. It's sometimes to have a good professional rider uh, to really show the horse in the best way and to really get the quality of the horse, the natural quality shown in the best way or like uh, try to uh, hide the things that the horse is really uh, uh, not that good at. Um, so you can choose to do that as well, only you, know, you can, um, you, you only get one, uh, uh, one option to get the uh, to get the exam and to get the right score. You can do it twice a year, and you m might have uh, more costs because you have the horse in training longer. So it's you can choose for yourself if you want to do it in the ABF Bay or in the EBOP. Um, yeah, it's it's the same test, it's the same score, only um, uh, it's just what you think suits you and the horse best. So um, the um, uh, the information we get, uh, as, as you see, the, the uh, suitability of the horses, the, the values that we uh, get from the tests, and the, uh, yeah, as I said, the testing of the offspring of the stallions gives you lots of information. So that's why we're doing it as a stud book, because it's, yeah, uh, it has, it's a lot of work and uh, uh, a lot of costs to get everything done, but it's good to get that information and to um, use it to improve uh, and to know what, what, yeah, where, where we are and where we're, what the vision is if we're on the right way. Um, and, and as I said, you can uh, change the, uh, the, the star or crown or model into the definite qualification by getting the score of 77 or higher. Um, well, this is just a, a bit more information. Um, uh, do you know what 
uh, how the um, score is uh, built up, what numbers you have to give to get to the score? Does everybody know how it works in EBOP or AVF Pay? Um, what, uh, yeah, what you have to, uh, to score? Okay. Um, well, uh, can, you, can you tell me? Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, my French is crap. Yeah. 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 Only the horse uh, ability, not the rider ability. Yeah, true, but a good rider can in present the horse in a better way. Um, but uh, the difference from the dressage test uh, compared to uh, these tests are, um, and not everybody understands that really uh, well, but the horse that really can score in a dressage test by doing uh, the exact uh, uh, yeah, showing the exact thing at the right spot in the right way doesn't really have to have the natural talent uh, to really score in the uh, uh, in the ebop. I know that the, in the dressage the place, it's more the rider that is educated. Yeah, and, and it's the education. Yeah. In the ebop, it is more the natural game. Yeah. The yeah. And yeah. And you don't blame the horse for being a little green or making a mistake or rider changing the line, whatever is all, all of it. It's not a problem. So you, you just see the horse uh, and try to give the best score for the uh, yeah the general impression you have on the horse in the test uh, on the natural talent the horse has. Yes. No, 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 no. No, good question. No, so that's why some people don't understand that the horse that uh, has, uh, is doing really good in uh, dressage tests or uh, has uh, uh, reached high level dressage uh, still can get lower score in the EBOP because of the natural talent. The horse can really m make a good frame uh, and uh, show the good tests in the dressage and yeah, don't. Uh, doesn't get the score because of uh, use of the body and the engagement of the hind leg in uh, the natural uh, na natural talent. What was your question? Did you have a question? No. Okay. So that's uh, that's good to uh, uh, compare because it, yeah, it, it's some people just don't. Uh, don't understand or do, don't know why the horse uh, that does a really uh, steady test still can get lower score in the uh, EBOP because that's not what what is asked. <coughs> um, okay, in the EBOP there are three ways uh, to um, three tests to to choose. You can do riding under the saddle, um, the uh, carriage test. And um, the show driving, we don't have much show driving. Uh, uh, that's really a pity. Uh, and each test, uh, yeah, uh, gives you the score uh, that you can use. So you can, uh, uh, yeah, you can choose what what suits your horse best to um, to uh, yeah to ride that test. Um, well, we uh, this is the the. Uh, I want to judge some videos with you uh, of just simple uh, uh, gates and movements to see quality. Um, and this is really the way you, uh, the list you have in your head to uh, get to the right score and to uh, judge the quality of the horse. So you start with rhythm, with, which is always number one. If the horse has lots of suppleness and 
uh, big steps but n no rhythm, then you get a, a lower score. <coughs> and that's, that sometimes confuses people because they say, well, he, he has this big walk and uh, lots of use of the body, only uh, it's a lateral m movement or it just doesn't have the, uh, the rhythm the, uh, in the walk, then the, uh, yeah, the walk is uh, uh, like a five uh, uh, or at least uh, below six. So you always start with rhythm, uh, then suppleness, um, yeah, the connection, which is in these tests, uh, yeah, can can be a little green or can be can change uh, during the test a little bit, but you won't really blame the horse. Um, yeah, impulsion. You always want the horse to be uh, engaged and active uh, from the hind leg. <coughs> yeah, straightness collection is not not the, uh, something that's. that's asked in these tasks, so you, you don't have to use the collection. Um, okay, the walk. Uh, I often have, a lot, uh, I have some discussion with breeders or owners on the score we give their horse, uh, especially walk. Walk is quite difficult. You know, if you ever judge any of you, uh, and um, I suppose you, you do know, uh, yeah, how how to uh, describe a good walk or a good quality of walk? Yeah, because yeah, there are lots of uh, struggles you can have in in the walk. There are so many different types of walk and uh, different problems you can have in the walk, and you really have to uh, to see lots of different horses to to. Um, know what score it is or to know how, uh, how, to, yeah, uh, how to compare it with the, the perfect walk. Uh, as long as you have it in your head that you always want the horse to, <coughs> sorry, to um, have a hind leg um, that, uh, or a front leg that waits for the hind leg to uh, uh, ad um, uh, yeah, adapt and, and um, yeah, make a, a, a four beat rhythm. Um, so well, once you have videos after this to explain better, but uh, lots of horses have a front leg that's too quick uh, and they lift it already before the hind leg is there uh, to uh, um, was aansluit of for the rijven. No, you understand. Um, so you want that V uh, and see that that's always uh, um, to keep it in the back of your uh, mind that you want to see that V in the legs. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So, uh, if you see it, no, uh, we'll see it in the uh, video better, uh, the uh, problems you can have, and uh, especially when there's some tension in the test, or uh, a horse is green, or uh, it, it has more tension in the first part of the test, and it's better in the end, then you, uh, uh, you can explain after the test to the rider that the, um, you've based your uh, score on uh, yeah, the complete walk that you've seen and that it was tensed in the beginning but better in the end so you can still get to uh, the uh, six, uh, for example. Uh, but if there was no good uh, part of the uh, test that the walk was regular and uh, uh, yeah, you don't see any natural quality in that, that gate, then uh, you cannot you cannot score something that you haven't seen, so it's not that you have to fantasize lots of things. It's just what yeah, what you see is what you get. So it, you make a complete uh, story on the whole test. So if there's tension in some parts of the test, you can uh, yeah explain that you you based your uh, your score on that. Understand that? Um, and someone just before asked me as well that if there's uh, there's tension in the walk, but the walk uh, is, is the first thing that's, uh, yeah, that you lose the rhythm or you have problems in the uh, uh, quality. Um, and it's during the whole test, uh, uh, how, how do you, uh, what do you do with it? And I said, well, if uh, you always want to give 
the opportunity to get the best performance. So after the test, you can always ask someone to do some more walk and yeah, uh, then you can uh, uh, give the horse some, some time and he still can uh, score that. <clears throat> but it, uh, it's always the whole test that you, uh, that you use to base your, your score on. Any questions uh, till now? Okay. So understand that you start with quality and you want some natural talent. That's why you do the test and that's why you, what you base your score on. As I te uh, just told you, you want to see that V. Um, do you see that the left front leg is too quick uh, lifted before the hind leg is there? I can do it again. Als ik op terug doe, waarom doet hij dan zo ver terug? <laughs> Understand what I mean? Yeah. Does everybody see it? If you don't see it, then don't just please tell me because then I can explain. You see that it, it's... Yeah. You just don't see the four beat rhythm of the walk. Um, so that's why you want the front leg to wait for the hind leg to be there and then you can get it through the body and after that you can uh, score the suppleness or the, the space or the big steps the horse has but you have to really see um, the rhythm first, sorry. And you have so many different types of walk in uh, all horses so you always have to uh, to see uh, good good points or or things that you want to to see better. Did you see this one? A whole different type of horse. You see that? Can anyone? Uh, everybody agrees on that? Because um, if you see him longer, <coughs> the right front leg is shorter in uh, the step than the left front leg. You see that? And normally you, you uh, more often see irregular steps uh, in the hind leg than in the front leg. So it's quite funny, but yeah, it's just not, not regular. So if the forebeat or the um, lengthening of the, the, the size of the steps uh, is different, then uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just the way he, he, he is. I would say five. Yeah. As long as you understand why, how oh, it's not um, it's not a six because you want to see the four beat. This horse has more suppleness and more use of the body. Yeah, he's regular to start with. He's active. Um, I would see some more overtrack. Uh, in this walk because it's uh, like a free walk with uh, lengthening, oh sorry, yeah we're back. Um, so I would like to see some more bigger steps, uh, more over track on that one for a higher score but I would give a seven uh, for the quality. You agree? Oh. I do think this hair really confuses. This horse is really almost too active, which makes him quicker, uh, but regular. Activity uh, is a positive thing, but it's bothering the horse a little bit because it's overactive and um, the, uh, the steps are like shorter and uh, uh, the use of the body is uh, less because of the energy. 
You understand that? So because it's too forward, uh, you want the horse to really relax and take the time to, uh, to get in, into the rhythm and, and balance. Good walk? I would say yes. Okay, now here you can see the transition from uh, walk from trot to walk, which is always good to see if the horse is uh, in the first step of of the walk regular or has balance or tension problems. It's a bit more difficult to see it from the back, but the right front leg is lifted already b before the hind leg is there. See that? Oh, sorry. Waarom komt dan een nieuwe in beeld? <coughs> Oké, okay, as I said in the dressage test, um, you want the horse to be really steady in the frame and in the connection. This horse is um, a bit uh, moving the head or uh, uh, see the quality, uh, which you won't blame won't blame the horse only. Um, if it infects the quality of the walk, you have to do something with it. If the horse is a little green and uh, not really steady in the connection and the walk's still good and you see the natural talent, then you can still score that only um, oh, only if it affects, affects the uh, quality of the gait. If you see this horse, um, I'm going to do it once again. If you see this horse in the uh, first part of the diagonal, uh, the walk is better after the horse really stretches and uh, gets more connection and, and more steady. So you see that it's not really that you want the horse to be there that far in the education, only it affects the quality of the gait. Yes? yes? Okay, this horse has a really big walk. Uh, only what I always th uh, find difficult is that the horse has a front leg that's uh, really f far away and you want more shoulder and more getting the front leg uh, to make a bigger step forward instead of back and lift it from there. So you get really lots of overtrack, only it, it, uh, yeah, it can confuse you or you can uh, think that there's more space or uh, uh, more overtrack because the front leg is coming from there instead of the hind leg is uh, yeah really uh, making an active step forward. Okay, um, ga ik weer heel traag? You're not falling asleep already? No. no? Okay. I was too slow right away. Okay, the trot's more easy, so. Uh, Let's uh, do a few uh, clips from the trot and then discuss that. And if you uh, understand what I mean, then uh, we can do some cancer because that's more difficult and that's, uh, you, you can have more problems in the, in the cancer. Um, the trot's more easy. You, uh, everybody has more feeling uh, when you see a trot. Uh, it's uh, yeah, really a show gate when they're uh, is uh, 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 a competition uh, in the arena, there's always trot and you, uh, yeah, it makes you happy or you have a feeling of quality on that. It's, it's easier than, uh, than uh, walk. Because it's... Uh, well, it's easier with the uh, rhythm of the trot. You, you can feel the rhythm and it takes you in the rhythm, or if it's not there, then it's, uh, yeah, if it's lame, you can see it right away. If it's irregular or loses balance, it's easier to see uh, than in the th uh, problems we just saw in the walk that you don't really recognize right away. Oh, nay. Recognize right away if you don't really have the technical information. Understand, understand the difference? So if you start with what you think is good on the, uh, trot you see here, um, 
I don't know if anybody can say something on this trot. Any, any positive uh, comments? It was a me medium trot on a diagonal, which uh, uh, is in the test as well. Well, it, it's always difficult to start with something positive because you always think, oh, a little, a little bit more this, uh, or a little bit less this. Um, but um, I would say it looks really sympathetic. It's uh, in a nice frame and uh, in a nice position of the neck. It looks active and it looks as if the horse carries itself. Um, uh, to, oh, um, to try to uh, name the things you want to be improved, I would like to see more engagement and uh, I want the uh, horse to be more uphill naturally, especially in the uh, uh, in the medium trot. And if you want more extension, then the horse shouldn't uh, like push the power from the hind leg uh, to the front, but carry himself and stay uh, more uphill uh, naturally. And in the uh, the uh, the medium shot, you get more information on how the horse can do the transition um, in and out of the medium shot. So you, you can see what the horse can do in the body and in the engagement of the hind leg. Uh, yeah, natural talent. So that's what you would like to improve on this trot. This trot has more um, quality, only the horse is a little bit greener. Oh. Sorry, yeah. Um, well, what, what do you say on this trot? A lot of energy. Yeah. Lot of energy and, um, yeah. The front is, is up. yeah. But it's a little uh, green and it's got so much energy and it uh, needs to be more together and uh, more in the connection to stay there. Um, uh, what you want to see in a dressage test, but you can see the natural talent. And it's not that you can have a horse that's so green that it's like uh, going around the arena uh, with, without any control. Um, but this is something that you can recognize that it's there and the horse has the hind leg, um, the, yeah, the engagement or the use of the body and the balance. And uh, it's, it's more uphill naturally. So that's what you, uh, yeah. Uh, you can uh, uh, score that in a positive way. Oh. Next. Oh, okay, we skipped the other one. This is not really interesting. N no, really. Uh, no, she doesn't really do the transitions, and the horse is, yeah pushing itself on, on the forehand uh, and has no self-carriage naturally. Uh, what is nice is that there's a lot of space and a lot of uh, energy and easy in, in the position of the neck, but you want it to be more carrying itself and more uphill. Uh, oh. Do it again. You see? It's, it's got a lot of suppleness, it's, got, it's easy, it doesn't look as if the horse um, has to work hard. Sorry. I'm, I'm so bad with the computer. Well? Doesn't do anything at all. And if this was just the uh, normal trot, could you say anything on the quality? How do you, it's regular, but the hind leg, he, he, he doesn't have any strength or power or self-carriage or uh, more gears to go. Uh, forward or back in some talent. Yeah, and power. Yeah, it looks like it's, 
like not not able to carry itself and it's not really together um, it, it's regular but that's it and there are a lot of things that you want to improve on that trot to get a higher score now this horse has a, a, a lot of trot yeah it's not difficult to see something that's just not good or extremely good, but everything in between, you have to really uh, have the good comments on to base your, your score on. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not difficult for m most people to see something that's... Uh, not good or uh, not regular or extremely good but the th yeah everything in between is the thing that you really have yeah and you have to see a lot of horses to have the uh to have the picture of the uh the perfect trot or to to know what what trot uh is scored uh for a, a seven for instance or a, um, you know what trot you want to see for a six or to, to compare them. Okay, I think this trot is good to, to um, stop with the trot because that was really nice. Um, okay, the canter is, is more difficult. Um, some Frisians uh, have an extremely good canter and it surprises you how much they, uh, 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 yeah, they have natural talent and self-carriage and uh, rhythm in, in the canter, um, but some really uh, have difficulties on the canter. Um, so the, uh, I, so one small detail, uh, because it's funny, the uh, carriage drivers were really uh, stressed when uh, uh, the stud book wanted to uh, introduce the canter in the test for the uh, carriage uh, as well, because there was only walk and trot in the, of the before. Uh, now there's canter as well, and it's uh, really, fun to see that the horses are doing it really well uh, in general and the canter is quite good and it surprises you that they have that much quality and ease to do it uh, uh, yeah uh, remembering that the the riders were really uh, not that uh, enthusiastic uh, what you have to do in the uh, test uh, to score the canter is to compare left and right you always have to make a, a score uh, on both and it's uh, yeah it's a bit stupid but it's quite often that you see quite a big difference in left and right in quality so if the uh, one side is uh, yeah uh, trying hard to, to get a six and the other one is an eight you give the seven and you have to explain that in your comment to the rider as well um, but you have to make one score in general for the canter and you have to um, yeah, score both sides um, and, and compare them. Um, so you want the horse, it's not really that the horse has to have that much education or higher level, uh, but you want the horse to carry itself and to uh, be balanced in the canter and uh, in the right rhythm uh, to roll through the canter, to have the right energy uh, and uh, uh, yeah, space and, and uh, lengthening of, of the canter strides. Um, oh, look now we are. I skipped the pictures, okay? That one was nice, by the way, with the hind leg under the body and carrying, and with that much angle in the uh, hind leg. Uh, but that's a horse in, that was good as well. You can see the quality if the horse has uh, got, got the right rhythm and uh, ease in the canter to really uh, jump and, and carry and um, yeah, you, use small gears in the canter as well because you have to do in the test um, a little medium canter and uh, a transition back again. Okay. You can do something with that transition from trot to canter already because the horse really has to use three strides uh, to get in the rhythm and to not stay in trot with the hind leg. Uh, if you want to see the correct uh, 
rhythm in this canter. It's really difficult because there's always one leg that's still on, on the floor because otherwise the horse doesn't know how to stay uh, uh, straight. Did you see that? So uh, you want the horse to really uh, bend the legs and uh, to jump from the floor and carry himself instead of staying close to the floor and uh, n not being able to carry itself or to uh, change in that canter and do, use more, uh, more um, gears. You see, this transition is already a lot easier, uh, and the rhythm is uh, yeah, already good in the first uh, stride. Which is more difficult for this horse to uh, uh, show uh, more power and bigger strides and, uh, and an easier uh, transition back to... Uh, So this, this uh, canter is better in quality and has more rhythm and self-carriage, but you still want to see more quality and uh, more use of the body and more energy uh, yeah, by nature. Lots of, of difference, uh, differences you see in uh, every horse. That's what makes it interesting. But that was, that's what makes it difficult as well to get uh, yeah, pl uh, plus and minus to, to get the, uh, the best score. Uh, that was difficult in self-carriage, uh, not really together in the canter, really. Uh, flat in the canter and uh, oh, not carrying itself. Yeah, but I... Yeah, but maybe the horse was... Yeah, and the horse was so big that she might be in fall uh, and uh, uh, that bothers her as well. But still you have to, uh, yeah, what you see is what you get. You still have to give the score on what you see now. And uh, because otherwise if you fantasize a lot and you think, oh, well, the saddle is better and a different rider and the horse is not pregnant or uh, whatever you uh, keep in the back of your mind, then you give another score which m might not really be correct. But I understand what you mean. Um, do you see the right rhythm in this canter? Do you see the horse carrying itself? I think it's correct. What would you like to see more in the canter of this horse to get a higher score? Yeah. And, and more... But, Yeah, but the horse does, uh, it's not like the hind leg stays there, the hind leg, yeah. And that's uh, more a thing for me in the use of the body, so it's more suppleness to get, to get the horse to uh, stay more together, to be there, than it's really quality uh, in, in the legs. Oh. Okay, as I said, the uh, horse is doing quite good cantering uh, in the uh, carriage diving. This is really uh, a canter that's a little, a little bit uh, blocky in uh, like f uh, it's almost a four uh, beat instead of a three beat rhythm. Did you see that? It's like uh, it's uh, yeah, and it's. Uh, it looks easy, and I think it's easy to sit on as well, but you don't really have uh, any uh, uh, yeah, like natural uh, uh, talent to uh, use more gears or to, to uh, lengthen the steps or, or to collect more because it's uh, one way of cantering. Here you can see the ease of the horse in the transition and rolling in the canter. Uh, 
easy. Um, sometimes there are just really good riders that can show as if the horse has the natural talent, but it's not really there. But when it's so simple and uh, you don't see the rider really doing anything or uh, having to uh, uh, make it look as if it's talented, but it, it's not really there. Um, you can see the difference if the horse has the ease and does it itself and has the quality in, in the transitions. That's why the transitions are, uh, for me, worth a lot to get information of uh, in uh, uh, what the horse can um, do in the body or what the hind leg can do uh, in a transition in, in the first strides or steps after the transition. Um, because when the horse has to uh, find balance or uh, rhythm after a transition or the horse is there right away, that's a natural talent and that's something you have to use in a positive way and the score you, you, you give it. Okay, I can show you a lot of more uh, videos from uh, Gates, but I think you'll fall asleep after that. I don't know how much time I have. Are there any questions uh, from you uh, on the system of the... Uh, tests we do and uh, how, uh, yeah, how we use it to gain information uh, from the scores we uh, we have and uh, or, or are there any other questions on uh, uh, how to score the quality or how to win, uh, I don't. you don't win <laughs> <laughs> no but if you uh, I just hope you understand and I've made that clear enough that it's a different thing to do a dressage test uh, than to do the uh, the uh, the test to just see the natural talent and to score that. Um, what the difference is? You understand that that it's it's a different thing. I have a question. Uh, do, would you recommend if you know that your horse is really really good in the, the gate in the gallop? Would you recommend that you do the IBOP before? present the horse so that here uh, in Canada, the judge, they do the IBOP and the examination. Same okay. Thing. So would you recommend if the horse has a really nice gallop that you do IBOP so they see the score yeah. before you do the examination? Well, I, I, I don't... I uh, really know if I'm the right person to advise you that, but uh, it really depends on the horse. But it's always good to, uh, if you have a good score in the IBOP, uh, yeah, I would definitely say yes, do it uh, before. But if the horse uh, doesn't really uh, do it at that moment, or is, you don't know what, what can happen, but the score is not there, then it can uh, affect uh, the... Uh, uh, the uh, presentation or the um, it can involve the score because they do use the score uh, from the uh, gates that the horses get in the test. They use it in the uh, yeah. They keep it in the back of their mind and they it, it's worth a lot. So if it, if the horse can do a good test, I would always always say yes. It's good on the CV and it always uh, is a is a plus. It's funny because I had in the uh, COVID. Uh, uh, COVID now EBOP uh, time, there were uh, people from Canada, they wanted to do an uh, EBOP and they were doing videos and send it to me and I had to uh, uh, watch them and score them and we would uh, uh, video call after that and discuss it. It was really fun because it's such a different way of riding and presenting a horse and one of them was like doing nothing and with no contact and the horse was not really good to uh, get a good opinion on because she was really not riding and the other one was uh, I think a nice horse uh, what was it with that one I don't know really what it was but I do remember that there were three horses maybe one of you was there as well but it was fun because it was so good to uh, to discuss the way of presenting the horse in the e and to really show the horse in the best way because that's uh, yeah it, it's always good to to just uh uh, tell tell people. No, but you you, you have to uh, get the horse in uh, the right connection, and you have to have some power in the horse, and not just ride it around in a, uh, the most easy, uh, s sweet way, because you don't really get the best quality or the best vision of uh, what what 
uh, kind of horse it is. Understand? So you really have to know that you just have to ride and uh, you have to uh, yeah, show everything the horse has, which, which is fun. It was not, uh, funny to discuss that and to just fe give them feedback on how I would say they could uh, yeah, get better scores, which, which was fun. Um, any other questions? Did, did, was it okay for you to uh, see the videos and uh, discuss the quality of the gates and how difficult it is and how different things can be uh, in different horses? So, th yeah, it's not really easy to, you have to try to keep the line, but I was just trying to uh, do it with you to just give the scores the way we do it normally in the test as a judge, that you can see how difficult it is and you try to do it right, but you have to just have the good comments and based on that you make the score and try to get every, everybody uh, yeah, uh, informed in the best way. Do you have a question? No? Okay. Okay, so um, thank you for uh, being here and uh, being this enthusiastic and uh, ho hope you have a nice weekend. <laughs>